All right. Good morning, Jemima. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tassie. How are you? How's everything? Uh, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Awaken Positive Power with Darcy Mata and myself talking to you today. I'm my God, soul. by the way. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I forget. Who's myself? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Today we're talking about that, actually. Um, <laughs> and so welcome, welcome. We're talking about issues to do, deal with depression, mental awareness, and suicide prevention. Uh, very important, guys. Just before we do start, there is a disclaimer down below. Please read it. And if you know anyone who needs any help, please do not hold back back on board when it comes to suicide number is vital. Um, even if you're not sure, it's better to be sure, you know. Um, and we're here to just talk to you as your support network, as your friends, and through experience of our own. So we hope that we can give back a little bit of what we've gone through and what we're actually going through in the present moment. Oh. Um, anyway, Darcy, hello, my lovely angel. How are I'm you? Not, I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm hanging in there. You know, life always presents some new and interesting challenge. So, yeah, we have our, our challenges going on and, and our family. And I know that Jemima has internet challenges at the moment um, because she's out in the desert and it's uh, 107 right now. And so I think that's messing with her internet. Um, so she will come back and forth, I think, throughout this meeting. So you're frozen now, Jemima. So come on back in when you can. Um, so she'll go on and off the screen. But um, one of the things I wanted to talk to Jemima about, so hopefully she will come back in just a moment. Maybe I'm going to pause this recording. I'm going to pause and see if I can get her back. Hi, everybody. So we're back here. We took a little pause. Jemima is having challenges to her internet. My theory is that it's a little bit more than that, Das. A little bit more than challenges to the internet. Ah. My, <laughs> my theory is that it's too hot and her yeah. uh, equipment can't handle it and the signal can't handle it. Right. So, Jemima, I'd really like you to talk for a little bit about the challenges you're facing right now and the loop that you're in because i think this is really important um sure oh yeah i'm here guys i'm here i, I know you can't see me and i'm i'm yelling a little because there's air conditioner on because it's 107 at 9 a.m in the morning yeah um outside and 109 in my rv that's one thing that's beautiful which <laughs> which as we all know heat cannot um can sometimes cause a little tension so this is adding to my wonderful um, loop, as Darcy put it. Um, I'm finding it really challenging. Like I'm trying to do, okay, Darcy, I'll just talk to you rather than, if, if you don't mind, yeah, everyone, because I just want to more, more conversation rise rather than lecture wise. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Darcy, what I said this morning was, you know, I'm just trying to do everything I can to um, keep everything as, I'm trying to keep my goals, my dreams, my ambitions, like this this video I'm making, my Pilates classes, my blog, all that sort of stuff that I'm trying to really go for gold. And just all these hindrances come in the way, all these hiccups, like the heat, like my not getting internet access, like it being my air conditioner having to be on, um, like just all these little things. And then like this week I was saying, I don't know if you heard guys, but um, I was just saying I was challenged by my past addictive mentality I'm always going to a place of uh, fear and, and uh, I don't know, panic and uncomfortable feeling, you know, and it's not, and I don't want to be that safe space, dare I say safe space, but I don't want to be in that headspace anymore. And I'm finding that I'm just there and it's really challenging to retrain my brain. Retrain my brain is like, oh, it's, I don't even, I think it's worse than baby steps. It's. It seems like I'm... I don't know how to put it. Um, I'm, I feel stunted, majorly stunted. And especially with the awareness of it, it's really even more challenging because I'm, I know I have the, the, um, the drive and the motivation to want to shift and to change and to work my brain into a different way and to sit with things. And I do do meditation. I practice this every day, guys. This is not something that I just go, Oh, well, it's going to happen. 
I practice, I do meditation, I do my classes, I do read thousands of things. I'm constantly downloading YouTube videos about how to improve my mental my mental space and all that sort of stuff. And it's stuck and it's really, it's this vicious and then also going, the loop gets bigger going back into just repeating the same pattern of relationship behavior. Um, then, this, then that brings out my triggers for wanting to go to drugs then it starts everything over again. And it's like, ah! Oh! When, what, how does right. this shift? Right. And I'm not, I mean, this is only eight, okay, this is only 18 months recovery, which is awesome. So it is young, but still 18 months is not six weeks. They say six weeks to break or break a habit. And this is way beyond six weeks. And I am frustrated as bleep, pardon me. <laughs> I won't say the swear word on YouTube, but my God, it just, Darcy has been such a crutch for me. I've been able to ring and just say, what the hell is going on? Like, this is just, I'm at the point where I feel really like I said to Darcy, I'm just not, Darcy, I said to you, <laughs> you're there. I can't see you or anyone. It's so weird. I know, um, you're just talking to me. I'm listening. And we're <laughs> it's really, so really strange. That's good. Um, I just feel like I'm at my wit's end and I don't understand. I mean, I did say to, I did say to you, Darcy, before, like, um, I feel like the universe is punishing me and I, for what I for being a bad person. And she said, no, that's not what it's about. And I don't want to be like that because I don't think the universe is like that. I don't think the universe is mean and, and punishes you and oh, I don't think that's the, I think the universe embraces us. <clears throat> but I just feel like what, why? What is all this? I'm trying to do everything and stick to it and not let anything get in the way. And I feel like fucking universe is in my, not the universe, I'm sorry, I did swear. Oh my God, everything's collapsing. <laughs> But I feel like it's all falling oh, apart. No. <clears throat> right. I don't. Well, oh, you know. Sorry, I, YouTube. I, I think that you said something really important there. I just have to back it up a little bit in my brain. Yeah. You know, you, you said the universe <clears throat> is not <clears throat> punishing you. It's not. It's you that are punishing you. Yeah. You're punishing. No. But yeah. Hey, dust. Yeah. Yeah. You are punishing. No, I don't want to. I want to try, and, but that's not. That's is that. You mean that's my my addict's brain that's is punishing me. That's what I'm trying to break. Because I know I'm me. Jemima is not trying to punish me. I'm trying to do everything I can to lift myself up, to to take time to see the beauty in me, which is really challenging. Right. Which is a bad habit, or like a bad you know thing that's been going on for years. I haven't done, and it's you know. But I, I'm I'm not trying. I don't want to be. Having all these hiccups and side swipes and of course not. Nobody wants oh. to. Be. But you know what? And I, I also feel like these things are not attached to your addiction. So this is kind of a, a tough thing to look at. But when you're going through <clears throat> multiple difficulties, I think one of the things that we do is we start stringing them all together, and then we get overwhelmed. So we're like, oh, see, this happened, and then that happened, and then this happened, yeah. and then that yeah. happened, and then all of these things happen, and they're enormous, and you can't carry them, and you crash. Each, yeah. you got to deal with each event, each thing as its individual event or issue. And it's all by itself. And you, and you deal with one thing. Because regardless of your addiction, you're going to have obstacles in life and difficulties. Yeah, I mean, they just are there. I'm not, I don't have a substance abuse problem. And yet I have a lot of <laughs> obstacles <laughs> and a lot yeah. of difficulties. And I'm continuously, you know, trying to say, okay, how am I gonna deal with this difficulty? How do I want to face this issue? But one of the things I really make myself consciously do is not string my difficulties together because it becomes right. overwhelming. I mean, you know, it's kind of like that whole game where we go, oh, uh, 
I got this ridiculous bill that's not mine, and now I have to figure out how to pay it, and I'm on the phone for four hours, and then my internet went down, and then my car got a flat tire. Yeah. Now yeah. I got to pick my kid up, and I don't know how to get there, and then, you know, my husband's working late. I got to walk the dogs. Now the dog is sick, and they did it, but whatever, right? We're, like, stringing it all yeah. together as if it's all the same event, and it's not. It just is what it is each thing you just deal with each thing when you can and how you can but and das can i can i ask you a question yeah yeah Sorry. yeah no go um uh how when you yeah. it's hard not to string all the stuff i can't speechless yeah. it's yeah. Hard. can you believe it people i'm speechless, speechless. Um, it's, hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's um hard not to string everything together when all that prevails is the darkness right now right like you know there's so little light that i see it i see the light because i keep the hope and the faith because that's where i'm going towards right but it's really hard when you it's back to back to back and it's not even about necessarily consciously joining it together it's just the fact that it is together it's one after the other after the other and then on top of it i have to deal with my addiction and it's like right it's really you get the you get the, the uh, yeah i, I just again, feel like you feel like giving up yeah, I get it. Because that dealing with everything at one time is very overwhelming. It's just too much. So yeah. you have to talk to yourself. You have to talk to yourself in the right way. <laughs> and you talk yeah. to yourself and say, I'm just going to deal with this issue this moment. So, and you have to just tell yourself, okay, right now, my challenge is the internet. Okay, I'm gonna deal with it at this time. And when, when I'm finished dealing with it, I'm gonna move on to my next challenge. So my next challenge is getting to work. How am I gonna get there? And that's all I'm gonna focus on. And when all those other ideas, you know, come in, like the the drug addicts around the corner or the internet, or if I could only have called so and so, blah, blah, blah push those things inside and you say, I'm just going to deal with getting to work. Then once you get there, you say, I'm just going to deal with this job and be present. That's all I'm going to do right now. And when the other things start invading your space, say, no, no, I reject that. I am here doing this job. This is what I'm doing right now, right now. Darcy. Sorry, mm -hmm. no, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be yeah. devil's advocate here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. okay, so I'm just thinking of doing that and just say the gas thing. Yeah. Um, I need to get gas to get to work because I, otherwise I can't get to work. <laughs> I can't get money to get to gas to get to work. Then it gets like that. It gets like, but how am I going to get gas if I can't get to work to get money to get gas? Right. And then how am I meant to get the money? When it just becomes this vicious circle. It does. And then everything money. comes in again. Right. And, and then it's like everything's connected. Into, right. And then you start getting into victim mode. And yeah. Um, yeah. And then you get into poor me mode. And then you get into, yep. the, you know, here I am and the, and the universe is, is knocking me upside down and sideways. I must be a terrible person. And yeah, yeah. And that's when you go back to one thing at a time. I mean, that's the only way I can manage it. I'm sure there are many other people who manage it in very different ways. But for me... I have to just go back to one thing at a time and say no. But how how is that one thing? But that that was one thing. But it's connected to everything else that that is just as stressful. You do know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like that that yeah. gas is one thing. Right. But then it's so you can do opens up. Right. You yeah. can do a couple of things. That's what I'm saying. You have to be conscious about this, and yeah. you have to say no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to string that together. I'm going to just focus on this one thing. No, I am not a victim of my circumstances. Yeah. I'm not going to be a victim of my circumstances. Yeah. I'm not sure. going to sit here and play the uh, I'm an ex addict identity game. Well, yes. because I'm an addict, this is happening and that's happening. And because of my addiction, no. this is, and then, then you became, then you start using your past addiction as your identity. And then right. that becomes a self-punishing thing. 
well, these things are happening to me because I allowed this terrible thing to happen and be this terrible person. And now, you know, and I'm crying, but I'm stuck. And you know what I mean? The whole identity. Yeah, it makes so much sense. It really does. It does. And it's hard work. Okay. I'm not saying that, that doing this is not hard work. It is. It no, is. I know. You've been practicing the other way a long time. And so yeah. you're being forced into practicing this new way of thinking and being and identity. You're practicing. It's so hard. It's, it's so hard. hard. It's really hard. But I have to tell you, I was going to start this today by saying, it's really important, Jemima, that everything you're going through right now, you're making public. Yeah. And you are sharing these obstacles with people in hopes that other people who are in the same place as you, and there's so many people who are in that same place, who feel yeah, like they're they're all... climbing <clears throat> this ladder out of a pit, and then the rungs yeah. keep breaking, and then they got to turn it maybe upside down and try again a different way. You know, I get it. Um, beautiful analogy, by the way, beautiful analogy. Yeah, right? It's like, okay, how do I get up? And the idea is, is that great, turn that ladder upside down, figure out maybe don't carry so much stuff up the ladder with you so you're not so heavy as you climb out or practice, just go on one step at a time, just one step yeah. and go slowly and go slowly and be kind to yourself. And, you know, having a mantra of I am, I release the need to be a victim to my addictions. I release the need to be a victim to my addictions. I release the need to suffer my way through this. I release the need. So what I'm actually doing right now is what I'm trying to fight, isn't it? Like I'm actually sitting in my tears and things right now. The wallowing is my go-to place, isn't it? It's my yes. go-to. This is what I'm trying to break. Yes, I know. And I'm not even that. See, that's so weird. Yeah. No. I'm just no. not even conscious of that. Like this is. Yes, I know. Uh. I disagree with that. I really do disagree yeah. with that. I, okay. you know, we talk about depression, but in my mind, depression yeah. is the non-expression of feelings and emotional yeah. energy. So when yeah. you know, it, it, when you allow yourself to become depressed or when depression overwhelms you or takes you. It's that non-expression of your feelings. And so that energy, that emotional energy is getting smushed down and depressed or suppressed. And then what do you do with all that energy? Everybody yeah. finds a way be to let that energy escape. And oftentimes it comes out with questionable behavior like smoking, yeah. drinking, drugs, with drugs, yeah, hair pulling, yeah overeating, insomnia, um, binge, nail biting, binge watching, nail biting, um, sex issues. I mean, it, it goes on and on. And it's just the non expression of our feelings about how overwhelmed we are with our lives. Yeah. But right now, what you are doing is you are expressing your totally. overwhelming feelings and like okay what do i do with this i gotta find a safe yeah. place gotta find a safe place to express my frustration with getting stuck in this loop of you know where i am physically and where i am mentally and mm -hmm. the expression of your big feelings is okay you're not yeah. wallowing yeah. you're expressing when you become wallowing is when you're lying down in bed, not getting out, or doing drugs again, yeah. or drinking again. I guess it's the more the, more the victim, um, more the victim thing that I was catching myself on, um, feeling like saying saying that wrong thing that. Yeah, you know, the universe is punishing me. That's that's the victim mode. <laughs> because I don't believe that at all. I think the universe is there cheering us on all the time, waiting for us to find it, find the joy. Yeah. So so that's that's the sort of victim mentality, the the old drug addictive 
brainwave of oh i've done something wrong so i'm going to be punished that sort of thing then i yeah. I, I i'm aware i was unaware that i even stepped into that while i'm still being well i'm also half a, half conscious of my change because i'm ah i don't even know a cat sits all does not nothing makes sense to and me you know, anymore right well <laughs> this is one of the reasons i no i get it this is one of the reasons i do restorative hypnosis for people is because mm -hmm. yeah. our conscious mind is trying to suss all this garbage out. Yeah. And if the conscious mind could have sussed all this garbage out earlier, we wouldn't have, you know, put ourselves in this situation to begin with. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the subconscious <clears throat> is so powerful. The subconscious has answers. The subconscious knows your power. The subconscious understands the way the universe works. One door closes, another door opens. It's the conscious mind that gets stuck in its scramble, you know, the drunk monkey stung by a bee scramble, where yeah. it's it gets in this place of, yeah, but this and this, and it tries to suss it out, and it's, it's stuck with the emotional attachments to all these events and all these things, yeah. and all that emotional attachment. And then the behavior that came in to um, <clears throat> distract you from yeah. achievement or, you know, fear of failure or all these uh, overwhelming things, you know, that's why it's so easy to go to our dark side because it's easier until you're yeah. in the middle of it. And then it's just <laughs> I'm sorry, then it's just yeah. whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. then you're losing everything. You know, we'll yeah. bring yeah. we'll bring our my friend Kimberly back again and she can talk a little bit more about what it means to go from because she had horrible um fear of failure and she had yeah. horrible fraud syndrome, and that's what sent her back into her her um addiction. And even uh Luke last week was saying that he had terrible fraud um, syndrome when he was yeah, yeah, first yeah. learning to do his thing. And his, you know, his coaches, his teachers were going, it's okay, man. You just got to keep moving through it and moving through it. So, yeah, Jemima, the conscious mind is very limited in its ability sometimes. And you just... What? You think... <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. mostly. So you just, <laughs> you know, it's okay. What you're doing, what you're doing is very brave. You're very brave right now. And I want you to tell yourself that you're very brave. And being brave, like everybody says, is not not being scared. It's being stare, scared, terrified, and continuing on regardless. You are continuing yeah. on terrified. And yes, <laughs> and that's incredibly brave. It's incredibly brave. So give yourself kudos for that. We're, we are all giving you kudos for that. And you're sharing. Well, it. I'm just hoping that. Yeah, exactly. The sharing, I hope. I mean, people can think of a wailing wench or whatever they want to feel, think and think it's all, whoa, well, I just want to be me center stage. And it's not actually at all my objective. My objective is to try and normalize what I'm going through for other people to not fear reaching out and right. saying, look, I'm not okay. Right. I'm not feeling okay. Life is not treating me okay. Well, I'm not treating life okay. Um, you know, all these things. And people need to know that there is, you can have a voice for this and that it is okay. And I'm so sick of people thinking, oh, well, just because they're, they're, they're talking about themselves or they're crying so much, whatever, it's all self-indulgent, um, woe is me behavior and all that crap. And it's not, it's real, it's honest. And I know that all of us go through it, but hey, yeah. I'll be the ballsy one and be as honest as possible and show my dirty laundry. Sorry, hello. Everyone knows everything about me now. Oh, well, <laughs> no surprises there. I mean, who cares? Who cares? It's me. I don't care. It's life. I can hold my own. You know, like. Let, let everyone just share each other's dirty laundry. Why not? I mean, what's the point of humans have this great knack of hiding things and when really they just want to be as honest and open as possible. Why? I mean, we why? need to live in the I, animal world. I'll and tell be as you honest why. That's a really yeah. good point. So I have a friend who I asked her, I said, hey, do you ever want to, she was dealing with her depression and then she went on 
antidepressants and you know I, I really don't like antidepressants unless they're yeah, me neither. absolutely necessary. And I know that Definitely. they are necessary and I would never Definitely. tell anybody not to do it. And I would yeah. never say, you know, discredit their, a person's experience with them if it was helpful for them. I'm just saying exactly. for me personally, a lot of times I feel that we go to antidepressants when maybe there are other alternatives, not always. So yeah, oftentimes I agree with you. Absolutely. I don't want to see the entire society being put on antidepressants because our entire society is overwhelming us. And sometimes that's what yeah. I that's my vision of it. Anyway, yeah. so she was on antidepressants, and I'm like, okay, you know, let's do some sessions together because we're gonna have to wean you off those antidepressants, and then you need to have the tools to continue forward in life and learn to deal with your obstacles as they come to you because just because you're off antidepressants doesn't mean that life is not going to continue to throw you obstacles you know sure. that's, yeah. that's the whole thing you know it's that ambiguity of life and we we prepare for things by having a retirement plan but you know then life throws us some other loop thing right so <laughs> sure does sure does Anyway, I asked her if she would come on and talk about it, and she said no, because it would, um, she felt it would jeopardize her position with her job. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I relate to that. I can understand that. I'm sure I'm not going to get a lot of jobs because I'm being honest about my past and everything. Or maybe yeah. I'll get more. Who knows? Maybe you'll <laughs> you know, get could work more. In my favor. It, yeah, right? it could work in my favor or not. And it's just, I totally, um, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah, so she it's a shame, though. It's a shame, though, isn't it? It's a shame that people will be judged because of their own life. I mean, come on. As, as long as you're a good person and you're, and you're working towards the best you can be and you've overcome your demons or whatever, like, what the hell? Who cares? Who are you? Who is someone else to say, oh, no? Right. Oh, no. Right. It's hard. I mean, it's really, it's really harsh, you know, and I've been really judgmental myself. My, my friend's brother was a really bad uh, heroin addict. Oh, and... Jesus. He, I mean, like to a point where, I mean, it just really bad, where he stole from his own family, precious yeah. family heirlooms and sold them for drugs and that kind of business. And so he was sober, he was clean. And my friend said, oh, my brother's going to visit and wants to spend the night. And I was like, I didn't want him there. Because in my head at yeah. that time, I was like, no, nope, an addict, once an addict, you're always an addict. I don't want an addict in my life space. I was very afraid of that person coming into my life space. Yeah. And and so I really didn't want them. We had a really bad row about it. And I had to really face my own prejudice with that. Yeah. So I get that's it. because and society that. has educated us that way. They don't, they don't, the addicts, for example, are, are bad people or they're, they're criminals or they or be, be careful, be careful. Right. And it's like, hang on, but what about the, when they recover? You know, and where's also the encouragement for the recovery? Like right. it should be like, good on you. Let's see the hope and, and give them opportunities right. to turn their life around. I mean, how can you turn your life around? You're not even given opportunities because society shuts you out. And then right. you're, so what are you meant to do? How are you meant to make your money? I mean, it's just this, uh, how are you not meant to get depressed, which then leads to the triggers, which then leads to you back to drugs. Do you right. know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, I do. Uh, I do. It's, I do. Yeah, it's crazy. And it, I mean, it, and it's all, it's, all of this is fear based. It's all yes, fear based. Yes. You know, it's all fear. Uh oh, they're gonna be dishonest. Well then put some protections in place so yeah. you can give them an opportunity without, you know, uh, testing them with it. You know, if you have exactly, precious exactly. items and you're concerned, remove those precious items and give them some space to prove themselves. You know, it's really yeah. about that. Um so yeah, I know it, it does become that kind of loop. So I just want to, you know, give you kudos through your difficulties, that you're sharing them, that you're brave, that you're expressing your feelings, that you're allowed to cry, you're allowed to be angry, you're allowed to be frustrated, that those feelings are yours and they're appropriate and all feelings are always appropriate all of the time. It's what we do with our feelings that makes them inappropriate or not. For example, mm -hmm. 
you're allowed to be angry. Be angry. That's I get it. You have a lot to be mad about. <laughs> but, <laughs> Thanks, Russ. <laughs> yeah, sure. But what are you going to do with that anger? Because yeah, for me, yeah, yeah. anger is the do energy. It should be lighting yeah. a fire under your butt to look at some other options to say, okay, if this is not working, I got to figure out, find another, find another option. I got to find Yeah, that's interesting. Option. In classes, I say, in my Pilates classes, I say, you know, sometimes I babble, as we all know, I babble a lot. <laughs> and I say, if I frustrate you, um, like use that energy. Like that's a powerful force of energy and, it, and it's how you use it. Like you can look at me and give me darts through the camera and go, ah, she's so annoying. But no, look at that, all that energy you're losing and you can put it into your body and maximize this amazing Pilates class and use your muscle strength and put that in your muscles and like just get stronger and stronger. And so my clients love that because now they can still get annoyed with me. And yep. I like to make them even more annoyed now because I know that they use this energy. And it's so true what you're saying. Like you turn, how do you use that energy? Right. Like, it, you know, how do you take it and use it constructively for your best? Usually it's change. And that is changing from darts to Jemima's through the camera back into their body. And that works wonders, I'm sure. I hope. <laughs> no, it does. Yeah, I mean, so it was the same thing when I was teaching acting classes. And I'd be yes. teaching the scene and it would get kind of stuck. And I'd look at the actor and say, so what are you feeling right now? And they go, you know, this this scene is just not working and it sucks. And then I go, okay, great. Yeah. And, and, you know, they get really mad at me. And I'm like, good. Do you think you could put that into the scene? <laughs> I think I did that a couple of times, yeah. Nidas. Take that, right? <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. Take all that yak, yak, yak that you're mad at me <laughs> and throw it into the scene and see what happens yep. in the scene. I'm like, you're sitting yeah. there trying to make the scene go right, and then you turn yeah. around and unleash your fury on me. You yeah. know, I never took it personally as an acting student. Of course. Student. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you have these acting students literally like, you call cut and they'd lose their cookies and you say, okay, great. We're going to start right now. Let's do that scene again. Yeah. And they'd throw all their, you know, I'm like coaching them to learn how to throw that into the scene and quit trying yeah. to make it a right scene or a good scene. And then this yeah. scene would really pop, you know? So yeah, it's the same. It's that same idea. Take the emotional energy and put it yeah. into something creative. You know, we were talking about well, if you're feeling really frustrated or sad or angry, how do you express it safely? And creativity is a great way to do it. Um, Luke was saying last week to um, plant something. You can paint, yeah, yeah. you can draw, you can write, you can dance, <clears throat> you can sing, you can bake. You know, um, you know what, Darcy? I have to ask you a question because I'm thinking um, I, I, my, this week, right. It's been quite a heavy week for me yeah. with my depression and we're feeling like I'm falling into a depression, feeling ne the dark space. And I find it hard to, and I, I know all that. Like I, I know that I want to, and I, and I get ready to go and paint my RV or, which is fun, which is not, which is meant to be a hobby. It's like, don't worry guys. It's like, it's a good thing. Yeah. And it's not stressful things that I'm choosing. And I want to use my energy to go, cool. I'm going to change and that. will make that will uplift me. But then I, sit in my chair and I just stare and I cry because I can't move to get my paintbrush you know what I mean it's like how do you even move to pick up your paintbrush when exactly. you're how do you do it how do you shift that? yeah how do you shift the energy and you know you're going I can do this I can do this and then you just still find yourself hours later in your chair crying going and then then it leads to the triggers of oh fudge yeah. here I am again I'm a failure you know it's just this yeah. Right. Well, you know, As you I, said. well, first of all, I, I'm going to um, ask you to change your words and, yes, and, okay. and not call it my depression anymore. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay. It's not yours. You don't want it. You don't need it. It doesn't serve you anymore. So it's not. Yeah. And this is a big thing when people say, well, you know, I have my, my illness or my difficulty that I'm dealing with or, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my depression or my addiction. No, it is not yours. Yeah. It is not yeah. yours. So you can call, you know, sometimes I have these overwhelming feelings where, and then I have to just sit down with them. Okay. So stop calling them my depression. And if they are coming over you overwhelming and you can't paint your RV, <clears throat> you can't move, 
you can't do anything except lie there, then let's do that ceremoniously. Okay, okay. Sit in the chair, put on your music, feel your feelings, call a friend, call somebody, put on a podcast, listen to a deep trance hypnosis, restorative hypnosis. I mean, you know, take the idea that the feelings are there energetically, not to fight them, not to discount them. What we resist persists, right? Yeah. If we ignore them and you can say to yourself as you're sitting in the chair, what am I feeling right now? Maybe what you can start to ask yourself some questions. I am feeling lost. I am feeling lonely. I am feeling desperate. I am feeling uh, alone. I am feeling weak. And then you can start to talk yourself through that. Okay, you're allowed to feel lost this moment. And how does that make you feel? Well, when I feel lost, I feel weak. Okay, are you really weak? Are you truly weak? No, I'm a Pilates instructor. I'm, I'm a strong person. I have a strong body. Right? So you need to kind of talk your way through it. But or you can call a friend. Right? This is a whole Yeah, but the calling a friend, there's just a, just a, I'm sure a lot of people get what I'm about to say is that when you're feeling that those dark feelings are taking over. I'm trying to change my language. <laughs> I was already so that's why I'm picking my words. Thank you. Um when my dark feelings are Oh, I just did it. When the dark feelings are starting to come and take over me, um, the last thing I want to do, even though the first thing I want to do is call a friend, really, but the last thing I want to do is call a friend too, because then I feel guilty or um, that I bring them down. And I know, I know, when friends call me, I'm never, they never feel guilty, never, never bring me down, because I just care and I want to help and I want to be there. But that doesn't come into play when I, when I'm the one who's in the darker place. Sure. And I know people feel, I don't understand. Everyone feels this, and it's like. It's just, ah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm even doing it now. I'm finding my brain going, shut up, Jemima. Like, right, because you're I'm arguing for your limitations. This is called arguing, right. arguing for your limitations. So, so frustrating. It's just like I'm just finding it. Yeah. You also <sighs> have your cat. Ball. You also have your cat. So you yeah, can, my butterball. <laughs> you can pick up butterball and you can hold yeah. butterball, right? Right. You can hold can, yeah. that. And I think, you know, prior to having one of those episodes where you go yeah. into that space, mm -hmm. uh, you want to have some tools available at the ready for you. Right. So when you do go into that, that dark pit, that black pit, you have something already at hand that you can use to start working your way out right right to say oh i recognize where i'm headed i'm gonna cut it off at the pass i recognize where i'm yeah. headed so i can feel those big feelings coming that i don't that i am having a struggle to manage so let me pick up one of the first of my tools so for myself when i have it I have a book I use. I have a number of books I use. I usually go to a book. So this book I right. love. Dun, da, da, dun, dun, da. This one's called. What is it? I'm I can't see it. I know. I'm sorry. Your internet. I'm showing it to everybody else. Woo. Okay. It's called. Oh, no. <laughs> it's cool, called man. The Wisdom of Florence Scovel Shin. And it's a complete volume of her four books. So she had four little skinny books. They were called The Game of Life and How to Play It, The Power of the Spoken Word, Your Word is Your Wand, and The Secret of Success. And she was around, I want to say, um, gosh, she was around in the, what, the 1920s or the turn of the century when... Um, Oh, the whole science of mind 
philosophy right. started to happen, right? That whole yeah. thing. Yeah. And so she talks about perfect self-expression or the d divine design. Now she's very Christian based. She's very, you know, she really came from that Christianity. So if Christianity is not your thing, I tell people it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter because um, I feel like all bait, all faiths, all, yeah. they all kind of crisscross at a certain point yeah. in, in terms of understanding that love is love and faith is faith. And you can either have faith in fear or faith in the darkness, or you can have faith in yourself or faith in faith and faith in a higher source, right? So however yeah. you want to physically describe that is up to you. If you want to describe it as Buddhism or Islam or whatever religious perspective you want to utilize, that's great. I don't have a problem with that. More power to you. Whatever gives you power of faith is what you're looking for as opposed to yeah. faith and fear and having faith in darkness. So right now you are having faith in darkness as being the yeah. power source. And so I uh -huh. love, right, right. And what you want to do is put faith in yourself of your power source and your power source, Jemima, always remind yourself is that you're a Pilates instructor, a yoga instructor, and a spiritual being. You're a Thank spiritual you. being, and that you're you have um, you're a little ever ready battery. You are <laughs> um, a continuous amount of energy just blows my mind. And you're a hummingbird. You don't move like yeah. other other birds. You can go up, down, <laughs> sideways, backwards, and forwards. So. Um, you know, it's it, you got to just find your power source to find your faith. So I like this book. This is one of my tools. It's always out by my side. Whenever I'm feeling, I will pick this book up at this point and just open to a page and read what Florence would have said. She would have said, you know, speak the word and have faith that what you've spoken, that the universe hears it. Or that God hears right. it, or your manifesting powers here, or whoever you're spending sending it to, great spirit, etc. Right. So I would yes. say, let's just find something for Jemima to hear. Okay. Can I ask you a question? While you, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, just thinking. Um. Uh, it may get a bit off track, so maybe we'll talk about it next week. But anyway, um, yeah, I was just thinking, like with the thoughts, right? And the universe here is what you're, what you're trying. You know, the universe is hearing me right now, and I, and I, and I, I get that. But then I get fearful because I am so grateful, but the way I'm speaking out loud to, like, to you right now, sounds like I'm not very grateful of, of um, stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm playing, Whoa, you know, and I don't want. I'm fearing that my Am I manifesting that? Am I manifesting unconsciously because the universe is hearing me speak negatively? That is, are they go, oh, oh, is that really what she wants? But oh well, she's asking for it. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, am I fucking? Oh, pardon, I'm sorry, sorry, YouTube. Am I messing <laughs> myself up? I've got, I've, I've got to get used to this. Um, I've got to gut a mouth, everyone. Um, am I messing myself up unconsciously because I'm speaking like this? But I'm really working towards you know, do you know what I mean like am I manifesting? yeah 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 I get it I hear you I know I get that and it's scary so, if that's the case going, like, right so you know let's just take a simple one let's say I I'm mad that I'm overweight let's say that I have a problem with being overweight and so I go put on my jeans and I'm like oh they're tight hi oh, you're fat you're so fat you've got to yeah. lose weight you're fat you got to lose weight so yeah. I've done two things with those words. One, I've berated myself and decided that fat is bad and that who I am right now and how I look is bad. And two, I put it in the future. I got to lose weight. I'm putting that in the future, which means in my subconscious, I got to lose weight. But for right now, I'm going to stay fat. And yeah. so now my behavior. Up. Right. 
So this is, this is called practice. So I got to stop myself when I hear myself say that and say, clear, clear, no. Yep. All right. My jeans don't fit me quite right. I am losing weight and feeling great. I'm a perfect size eight. I am losing weight and feeling great. I'm a perfect size eight. I eat food that is nourishing and good, and I lovingly exercise my body. I but mean, doesn't I, the universe hear the unconscious going, yeah, right? No, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> Sorry. No, your, your subconscious hears what you tell it. So you have to <sighs> consciously say it opposite. Just like I was saying with cigarettes, you know, when smokers come to me, and we, we pick a date in the future. Okay, we pick an important date. When do you want to quit? We're not doing it tomorrow. Let's pick a date. It's got to be important to you. Okay, let's pick this date. Okay, that sounds really good. So every time now, between now and then, every time you pull out a cigarette, every time you go to light it, you say, I am a non-smoker and I don't need this anymore. I don't like this. It doesn't serve me. I don't want it. So yeah, they are in that space, but you've got to practice your words. You got to use your words. Yeah. You got to, you no longer have depression. It is not your depression. It's not my depression. You are simply, you are dealing with your big feelings and you are honoring right. your big feelings. Just like if you were sick, you wouldn't say my cancer or my, you know, uh, stomach problem, or it, it would be, yeah. I'm dealing with this illness and healing from. So you, yeah, really when I had a hernia, like even then, yeah. I just said, I had a hernia, it wasn't my hernia, yeah. I had a hernia. Yeah, you had, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I don't want to, I mean, that I don't want to, I mean, the hernia, you, yeah, yeah, so I, I mean, yeah I dealing <laughs> with, yeah, you dealt with that hernia and you healed from it, dealing with, yeah. Yeah. healing from it's the same thing with our mental perspectives, our mental and our emotional perspectives. So if we are going around saying, I can't, or yeah. I, I don't, or whatever our bad trance is, we have to verbally, whether we believe it or not, verbally change it up. Just change up how you're saying it. Change up how you're saying yeah. it. And, and the universe, hears what you say and sees the effort it's not like god goes yeah but i know what you're really thinking yeah yeah you know that's <laughs> well that's, that's where, yeah you're working Sorry. against it you've got to keep working and you've got to keep practicing yeah. it's all about practice remember that taking drugs and alcohol is it's just kind of it's giving up and cheating it's not practicing it's having no it masks everything and then you become more depressed anyway right you do you become more depressed it's, it's a bit just yeah or anxious or whatever maybe remember i said to you like i used to use methamphetamine for, for my confidence and then that went sideways quickly and i became a recluse and paranoid as hell because i mean it just was, yeah 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 i mean it just didn't it was for the right reasons at the beginning <laughs> not really so i mean i don't mean to laugh guys i've got to laugh at my own addiction I've got my own past addiction hang on not mine i have to laugh at the addiction that Ah, I've got to practice this. <laughs> Choose my word. My God. <laughs> yeah, okay, you got to laugh at the addiction <laughs> that you were dealing with. Yeah, thank you. God. That's all right. Darcy, this cool. thing called life, this thing called life is a challenge at times. It's so challenging at times. I mean, I love life, but it's freaking damn it right now. It's just overwhelming and it's just amazing to... Uh, I don't know, amazing to be so conscious of the overwhelmingness of it, if that's a sentence, if that can make English sentence, I need to go back to English school too. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Okay, um, so I opened the book and it... Um, yes, please. So she, like I said, she's very Christian based. So she talks okay. about things like in divine or she talks a lot about Jesus, that kind of thing. And, um, and like I said, I feel like, well, I'm not going to get into my... Yeah. philosophy and religion but anyway she says the divine design of my life now comes to fat pass i now fill the place 
I now fill the place that I can fill and no one else can fill. I now do the things which I can do and no one else can do. I am fully equipped for the divine plan of my life. I am more than equal to the situation. All doors mm -hmm. now open for happy surprises and the divine plan of my life is speeded up under grace. When man is mm. harmonious and happy, man is healthy. Uh, Jesus Christ said, she uses a lot of Bible stuff. Be yeah. thou healed, your sins are forgiven. Isn't that funny? Because that's what we started out with you talking about. I feel like I'm, you know, being punished yes. from past life thing. Well, be thou healed. And remember, we're using that new phrase now. I'm dealing with and healing from. So yeah. be thou healed, your sins are forgiven. Resentment, ill will, hate, fear, they tear down the cells of your body and poison yes. the blood. Love, faith, um, these things heal your body, mm -hmm. right? When man sees himself as God, he will become a radiant being, timeless, birthless, deathless, for God made man in his likeness and in his image. I think that's a really powerful metaphor. So the idea here is that each one of us has great spirit, God, however you want to say, in us, each and every one of us has... Yeah our spirit, our God-like spirit in us. We are each an aspect, a part of God. And when we honor that deep at the center of our being and allow it to come forward, that's where our healing comes forward. And all these worldly base, um, our lowest base vibrations, you know, addictions and poverty, these are our lowest base vibrations, fear, yeah. anger, meanness, um, not anger, but fear and meanness, taking our anger and turning it on others or turning it on ourselves. This is what you're, you're working against right now and you're learning to come to your higher vibration and having faith in faith, not faith in fear and doing your practice so get your tools around you, surrounded by you, so that whenever yep. you feel that baseness coming towards you, that you can yep. say, okay, here's a tool I'm going to use right now so that you can find your God expression in you, so you can yep. find that beauty place in you, that 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 fountain of goodness and love in you. And your feelings are your feelings, and I never want to take those away from you. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're your feelings. They're a power source. You feel deeply. And thank God for people like you who feel deeply. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she says weak. That's hysterical laughter in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, bless you, Darcy. What a, what a powerful support you are, really. I, I honour you so much and and the little tidbits of um, readings and things you bring in are just so inspiring. So thank you, thank you, thank you, you know. Um, bless you. Are you going to do a meditation for us this week? I don't know if it's time. Oh, yeah, I can't even, I didn't even know. Actually, we got to go. We've got to go, go. Okay. I think, I that think was that, meditation, yeah. I think that was it. You know, we're going to end it with Beautiful. this today. And you know what, Jemima? You have to do your homework every I, day. Uh, excuse me? I do. I'm a homework queen. You're a homework queen. All right, good. So that's good then. Never mind. You got homework today. <laughs> your homework today is to, when your big feelings come over you, sit down, close your eyes, and breathe right into your heart and say, Deep at the center of my being, 
is an infinite well of love and goodness. I now allow that love and goodness to flow upward, fills my mind, my heart, my body, my consciousness, my RV, and the world about around me and returns to me multiplied. And you just repeat it over and over and over until you, uh, and until you allow yourself to get up and move forward. Yeah. Right? Okay. I'll email it. Homework to done. <laughs> Work done. I will do that. That's a beautiful one. Yeah. Oh, hey, listen, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for like, you know, I hope that we can, I don't know. That's all. <laughs> I'm not just stringing sentences together at all. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed and I'm exhausted right now. So yeah. Go thank take, you for being here again. And, Do a restorative hypnosis. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Go lay down. Go listen to a recording and let all it go. Let it all go. All the yeah. chatter, all the thought, all the stuff. Go do your breath work. Go listen to that yeah. restorative recording I sent you. Yeah. Go and and let it go. Okay. And guys, you just got tools too. You got tools to know how to do some relaxation as, as well. You know, there's lots of things that Das mentioned that I could do, and um, so it helps you as well. Like yeah, I hope that you guys are all all right. Yeah, and anybody and, who's um, watching this, you too, back at you. Yeah, I'm going to go do mine. Yeah. yeah. And there'll be peace and love. Yay. Wait, wait. Anybody who's watching, they can always go to one of our past sessions and go yes. to our meditations at the past sessions if they want to listen to one of those. We had some nice meditations there. Okay. Beautiful meditations. Thank All you. All right. Jemima, All right. I love you. Uh, I love you. Thank you for working with me today. Thank you, everyone, for working with me today, of course. And um, bless you. And Peace out. And um, does you press and record end because I don't have my record end on this end. Okay. <laughs> so I'll see you on the other end. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Oh, yes, that one. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.